welcome back to the Red Dice Diaries and this video is a video that was suggested by Eric Sheldahl, apologies if I've not pronounced your second name correctly Eric, and it was in a video comment to one of the videos that I myself had commented on and in his comment Eric asks how do you get players to like and invest in an NPC? Well it's an interesting question and in Eric's comment he talked about the idea of having a trusted or liked NPC become a villain because they had betrayed the player characters and the fact that they'd be hated so much more so because they'd been perceived as a friend after all nothing stings quite as bitterly as betrayal so ironically I'm going to say that one of the best ways to get players to like an NPC is not to have all the various NPCs keep betraying them. After all, if every NPC who seems friendly ends up becoming a villain or betraying the player party or turning on them, then inevitably they're going to stop trusting everyone since they're just going to be waiting and biding their time for that inevitable betrayal. However, there are some other ways that you can get your players to like and invest a certain level of trust in an NPC. And I'm just going to give a few suggestions below. I'm sure there are others that people out there will think of. And hopefully you'll add some to the comments at the end of this video. The first way I'm going to suggest is shared interests. Now in real life, we tend to associate with people who share similar hobbies, professions, interests, etc. Or personal habits to ourselves. Perhaps one of the players is a grizzled cop for their PC and they discover that the NPC drinks at the same bar as they do or even has the same taste in liquor. These shared interests also give a way to have player characters and NPCs meet if they hang around the same people or in the same location. And this leads me on to my next point. Don't try to force or speed up the building of a relationship between NPCs or PCs. Now, unless an NPC is already an established part of a player character's background, don't try and rush building up the relationship. In life, friendship is something that grows over time as we build up a certain level of trust in people and a certain familiarity with them. Attempting to rush this will seem very artificial and forced, and canny players will probably suspect that you're trying to deliberately build up trust for some sort of nefarious reason and they may pull, pull away from the NPC as a reaction to this. I would go so far as to say that the first few times a player character and an NPC encounter each other that the actual level of interaction between them should be fairly minimal, just enough to get them to notice each other and then they can slowly build up this interaction to a normal level of socialising. Perhaps after noticing the NPC in the bar a few times and just saying hello politely or nodding at them across the bar, your PC cop heads in after a hard shift's work for a drink and the NPC orders the drink for them, saying, rough day. You can then lead into some more talking and gradual conversation between them. My next point is sympathy. People tend to feel sorry for those who have been through a traumatic experience, especially if it's one that they have experienced themselves. So again, it builds up this level of familiarity. And this can be used to the GM's advantage to create common ground between the player character and the NPC, increasing the player investment in the NPC. For example, if your grizzled cop has in her background that she lost her partner in a drugs bust gone sour, Perhaps she heads to the bar after a long day to find the NPC sat there gazing into a shot glass, his eyes reddened and bleary as though he's been crying sometime in the recent past. As she gets close to the bar, the NPC lifts up his glass almost to an imaginary someone that he's staring off at in the far distance and says, Here's to you, Johnny. Best damn partner a guy could ever have. I'll miss you, buddy. And he then downs the shot, spluttering slightly. Now, obviously, I've gone for a, a very stereotypical and obvious example for this uh, to pull on the player's background. But you could make it a lot more subtle in your game, depending on how likely your players are to invest in NPCs. 
The next suggestion I would make is usefulness and gratitude. Since RPGs are a game, players tend to respond to those NPCs that either have been useful to them in the past or have the potential to be useful to them in the future. It's only natural since most players want their PCs to be successful in the game based on whatever their personal goals are. An NPC who can help them achieve this will be viewed in a very favourable light. However, don't just have the NPC help the players randomly out of the goodness of their hearts, since unless they, they really are a saintly NPC, people don't tend to just help people out out to the goodness of their heart. An NPC should have a very good reason for helping the PC in a particular situation. Whether it's a quid pro quo exchange of favours, gratitude for something that the PC has done in the past, or simply because they've already got an established friendship. Continuing our example, perhaps after the PC has talked to the NPC about the loss of his partner and seen that he's alright, the two of them start drinking together a bit more regularly after their shift. There's nothing romantic between them, but they're both cops in high-stress jobs, so it helps to have someone to talk to. One night, they're sat in a bar when two internal affairs agents come in, wanting to know where the PC was the night a notorious drugs dealer was shot and killed. Without missing a beat, the NPC flashes his badge and says, She was here drinking with me all night. Not happy, the IA agents accept the testimony and leave. The NPC nods, raises his glass to the player character and says, Us cops got to stick together, right? And again, that's a very obvious example, but immediately it gets that NPC a certain level of gratitude from the player, and they seem useful. Therefore, the player will probably be interested in interacting with them more in the future, and finding out exactly why the NPC helped them out in this particular situation. Now we come to the darker side of friendships, which is when friendships go sour and begin to fall away. Although similarity and shared experiences can bring people together, there are often still differences between people that can drive them apart. Perhaps one party wants something the other doesn't, or there are some unreconcilable differences or opinions. Maybe they find out some information they were previously unaware of about this person, which changes their perception of them. It doesn't take a lot to drive a wedge between people, and once there, unless the participants are really willing to work at and resolve their differences, the gap between the two will just get larger and larger as more conflicts of interest will ooze out of the cracks until the relationship is damaged almost beyond repair. Note that unless you're going for the evil villain masquerading as a friend from the start, which is a bit obvious to be honest and can seem very artificial, friendships tend to break apart due to natural means rather than a deliberate betrayal on behalf of one of the more of the parties. In our example, after providing an alibi for the PC, the two end up drinking in the bar, relieved that she isn't going to jail, the player character drinks too much and attempts to take her relationship with the NPC to a more physical level, kissing the NPC on the lips. Looking shocked and conflicted, the NPC pulls back saying, no, no, no I, I can't, I, I've got a wife and kids, uh, I, I, I think I should go, and leaves the bar. He doesn't show up there for the next few nights. Again, this is a bit obvious since it's just an example with no background or build-up to it, but even so, it's far less cartoony than the NPC turning out to be a moustache-twirling villain who's been setting up the PCs for a fall since the start. Even if your NPC is one of these evil, evil villains, don't have them behave like one. It's very rare that anyone deliberately sets out to be evil. They normally have motivations or ideas that means they think they are in the right. It's only when you shine the light of the, the common opinion of society on them that people are labelled as villainous or evil. Giving NPCs actual motivations rooted in their own wants and desires, makes them seem far more complex and three-dimensional. We move on to our final point, which is lies. Everyone in life tells lies. Small ones mostly, whether it be to spare people's feelings, 
or whatever. I mean, we call them white lies so that we can comfort ourselves with the fact that they're not really huge lies and we're telling them for an overall good purpose. However, in a game, nothing is going to make a player character more suspicious of an NPC than finding out they have lied to them. For example, in our cops in a bar example, let's say that the NPC had responded to the player character's romantic advances. The player character wakes up in bed next to the NPC the next morning, and as she climbs out of bed, she finds on the floor, next to the NPC's clothing, a small picture that has fallen out of his wallet. It's a picture of the NPC with his wife and children. Now, the relationship will take a very different and far more confrontational turn, probably, as a result of this. Conversely, though, lies can, if used properly, actually make the PC feel more sympathetic towards a character, which plays into what we were talking about earlier. For example, let's say that the, the PC has found the photo of the NPC with his wife and children and confronts him about his lie of omission, at which point the NPC breaks down into tears and offers to take the player character to his wife. He leads her to a cemetery plot where both his wife and the children are buried after they died in a house fire whilst he was out on patrol one night. He hasn't even thought about another woman since then and has carried their picture with him as a constant reminder of what he's lost. This example flips the whole lie around and actually uses it to create sympathy for the NPC, in addition to providing more background and texture to what otherwise could have been a one-dimensional NPC. In real life, we barely ever air all of our secrets and our past to people when we first meet them. Having your NPC hold some things back not only makes them seem more three-dimensional and more real, but it gives you a chance to reveal these facts at a later date and lure the PCs into investing in them more and maybe even investigating what actually happened. Perhaps the the NPC's family died as a result of the machinations of a more villainous NPC or another agency within your game world. Who knows? But it all draws the player in and gets them to invest in it. So, in conclusion, Here's a list of my suggestions for making an NPC that the players will like. Number one, don't have all NPCs betray the characters. They'll start to expect it from future NPCs and will pull away from emotionally investing in them. Number two, give the NPCs some common interests with the player character. Number three, Start off slowly, don't try and rush building the relationship, let it happen gradually. Number four, make the NPC useful or helpful in some way to the player character. Five, once the relationship starts to build, have the NPC help the player character in some sort of tangible or very real fashion to build and foster trust between them. Six, when you're creating the NPC, come up with a few secrets or aspects of their life that the NPC keeps to themselves and have them slowly revealed as the relationship builds. This both gives a sense of the relationship progressing and it makes the NPC seem more nuanced and more three-dimensional. And finally, seven, if the NPCs are going to betray or go against the player characters, give them some actual motivations for doing so, other than them just being villains. Better yet, have it occur as the result of a friendship gone sour. It will seem far more plausible, and the hatred that the player characters will feel in the betrayal will be that much greater due to the closeness that they once felt with the NPCs. So, there's a few suggestions from me on how to create NPCs that the players invest in and will trust. I hope that they prove useful to you and that if you've liked this video, you'll click on like and subscribe. We put out new videos every week. If you have any additional suggestions, please put them in the comments box below or hit me up in the Google Plus links. I'd love to see what your own ideas are. And until I see you in the next video, take care and thank you very much for watching and for listening. See you soon.